It may not be what you want to be painting, but still lifes might just be what you should be painting. I've got three main reasons why. Let's talk about them. Hello, Ryan here. I used to think that still life painting was pretty lame. Fruit, jugs, eggs. This was the sort of thing that we started with when learning to paint at art school. It wasn't my jam, but thinking back on it, maybe it's because I found painting to be really difficult and I just didn't like being so bad at it. Now, a good few years later, my attitude is a bit different. I'm actually having a lot of fun painting stupid apples and even just primitive shapes every now and then. What's up with that? Okay, so the thing is, I've been running some beginner painting lessons recently, first for my team over at Magma, and then for our community through our YouTube channel there. That in itself has been a learning curve for me because it's the first time I'm in this sort of role. Even though I've been doing art for a long while, went to art school and everything, my painting skills are still a long way from where I want them to be. But I feel like I'm learning a lot by having to revisit all these fundamentals to structure these lessons and then choosing ways to demonstrate those, exercises to give, etc. I also spoke about needing some easy wins in my video on art block to help build momentum and confidence. This is where the humble still life comes in and things start to get a little fruity. Before we dive in though, what do I mean by still life? This is usually an assortment of objects from everyday life, seemingly mundane but often symbolic in the choice of objects that get grouped together. It's not just flowers and bowls of fruit, but various tools and mementos, a skull placed neatly or not on a pile of old leather bound books. Now why should you be painting this sort of thing? First and foremost, this is where you get to apply and grow your fundamental skills. Value, lighting, perspective, shapes. You can focus in on each of these things in small manageable chunks when you choose a simple subject. Cubes and spheres, and then on to other easily recognizable but still simple forms. The apple for example, or here a pomegranate. Fruit is great because while a little more interesting than a floating sphere, the forms are still familiar and easy for us to get our head around. That familiar aspect is pretty key here because we all know what an apple should look like. You can assess your progress more easily when you're working with such recognizable forms in the beginning. Of course you want to tackle more difficult things to really see what you're capable of, but for most it's probably better to lay a solid foundation first. That way you can chart a path when it comes to more challenging subjects and problem solve more easily. So don't brush off these seemingly easy or boring exercises early on. Quickly things will shift from that core learning to exploration and play, and that brings us to our second point. A simple subject also gives you the opportunity to knock out more paintings and to experiment relatively quickly. So in a short space of time you can easily fill up a few canvases or sketchbook pages. Like I said we all know what an apple is supposed to look like, so once we're able to reproduce that easily enough, we can start to play around with different lighting styles, different colors of lighting, adding another object or two into the mix, or even try a totally different medium. I think this is a good stage to also do some timed exercises, forcing you to try new approaches to get good results in less time. Not just to be quicker, but to be more efficient. You'll be able to try things that can make that apple or pear or coffee pot look and feel more interesting. It may even start to set you up for something bigger. At some point it's time to step up the challenge, but the goal is not necessarily to churn out hundreds of still life paintings first before you move on to your big ideas. Instead, I recommend working backwards, having an idea of what you want to paint and then use the still life as your training ground. Bring in materials or items that might appear in your next painting so that you can have a better understanding of them. So first you start with developing those core skills and getting a feel for the medium, and then when the ideas start flowing, you use those to guide your learning. This takes a bit of pressure off in tackling your next idea. For example, I don't necessarily want to be a still life painter, I don't want to be recognized for that, but I haven't ever painted shiny metal armor with the warm orange glow of a campfire on it. What if I screw it up and make a mess of my painting? Make a mess of the idea that I was so excited about? It's going to be pretty easy to get frustrated, disheartened even. There is something to be said for throwing yourself in the deep end and learning to swim on the job so to speak. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but you could use a still life study to practice that specific thing and lay a little mental groundwork. You might be less emotionally attached to how the study turns out, letting you focus on the problem solving and understanding the subject. The still life now has a purpose in your grand journey. But does it even need to? Actually, we have a fourth point here. Painting for painting's sake. There doesn't really need to be a goal in mind, it can just be a relaxing thing that you do for yourself. A way to wind down after more serious tasks that dominated your week. Nobody even has to see it, it's just you and your paintbrushes, or in my case a stylus, and some good music. 
Actually, if you'd be keen on me hosting an occasional still life study live stream on a shared magma canvas, let me know in the comments. It could be fun. Again, if it's not necessarily something you want to make your name from and there's not that pressure of doing something for a client or the pressure you put on yourself to produce something exceptional to succeed, it can just be what I guess you'd call a cozy activity. And that is enough. So give it a bash. Don't scoff at the old still life like my younger, more foolish self did. It's definitely been helpful for me in recent months, especially to maintain a better painting habit. Speaking of, if you're having a hard time putting pencil to paper, brush to canvas, stylus to tablet, maybe take a look at this video next where we try to make sense of that wretched art block and some things that might be causing it. That's all from me. Ciao for now.